Welcome to Strength Based Marketing. I wonder if you've ever had the challenge, if you're a lady and you've ever had this challenge, that's because I want to talk to ladies today. Uh, you've ever had the challenge of trying to grow your career and it seems like every time you, you assert yourself, you get negative feedback and, and you're wanting, but how come the rules aren't the same? How can, we, how can I make a bigger impact? How can I grow my career faster? And so I wanted to bring to you uh, Kathy Kulesha, who actually specializes in exactly that. She's spoken all over the country. She's spoken in Europe. And I'm so grateful that she's here. Kathy, thanks for being on the show. It's my pleasure. I'm excited to be here and spend a little time with you, Patrick. I'm, I'm honored to have you. I know I, I've known you as a speaker and seen you do tremendous things you know, all over the country, you've, you've been able to touch the lives of so many ladies. And I, I want to know, has this COVID-19 actually affected you? And then what did you do to pivot? And how are you growing your, your services and your coaching in the country today? Yeah, it sure has affected me. I wasn't like you. I believe you were actually on the road when the recall came for speakers. I was uh, spending time at home that week. Uh, predicting that the speakers that were on the road would get called back. Uh, I'm not psychic, but I was watching the press and I knew it would happen. Uh, so to pivot or to kind of course correct really in a way, I went back to something that I'm very passionate about because you know when you're on the road, there's no time to really focus on anything but being on the road and serving those clients that you're in the classroom with. So I've actually got to get back to my roots uh, before I got into speaking, I was doing wellness coaching. And when I got into speaking, I refound my love for uh, leadership and women in leadership. So now I am relaunching my coaching business, focusing on helping women lead without apologizing. Without apologizing. Mm -hmm. What does that mean to you? I mean, I've seen women leaders that are just amazing. My, the greatest mentor in my life. Uh, she was amazing, and I learned so much from her. Uh, what do you mean by that? So what I mean is often as women, we, and it's something we do to ourselves, we have these limiting beliefs about ourselves, and we often feel undeserving of a seat at the table, at the boardroom table, or in, in a meeting, or even our position. And I, you know, coming up, I felt this way, like it felt like when they gave me a job, they were taking the job away from a man. And I'm of the generation of women that went to college because their moms told them to go to college. And I remember hearing my dad say that they hired another woman and one less job for me. So I came up not believing that I deserved those seats at the table. So in a way, we may not say it out loud, but we often pull back and don't go all in because we feel guilty or undeserving of the opportunities that have been given to us. Hmm. So how do, you, uh, how do you guide people, women, through that, that process? What are the, some of the things that you're doing to really uh, help solve that pain? Because I imagine that that's a bit of a mind mm -hmm. frick, and it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's the, I mean, what do you do? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, as women, we spend a lot of time focusing on our weaknesses and not on our strengths. So it could be a simple thing like self-reflection and looking at what you're really good at and really understanding the value that that has to your own business or to the business that you serve. Uh, there's building confidence. And I know this from teaching classes to women, the number one thing that women want is to be more confident. Uh, the second really close second, maybe even tied is to learn how to be more assertive. Uh, so confidence is something that is a mindset, uh, but sometimes it does come from we focus on the areas that we're not really good at or some of our weaknesses. So it's building up your ability to serve or to perform in those areas. And then it's also working on your mindset and building that confidence because confidence doesn't come from uh, totally just wishing yourself to be confident. I kind of make this joke about when somebody's, have you ever heard somebody when they're going to join the gym, they say, I'm going to join the gym when I lose five pounds. Yeah. 
right? You know, because I want to look better on the treadmill. And we sometimes treat confidence that way. I'm going to apply for the job or ask for promotion, uh, you know, or ask for a raise or volunteer for a project when I feel more confident. But the reality is the way be you become more confident is by actually doing. Um, and then with the assertiveness, it's really about learning how to say things in a different way. But first you have to believe it. And then you've got to learn how to say it. How do you, like, you know, I've taught all over the country, uh, you know, uh, challenging situations, dealing with, uh, you know, difficult people and then having to manage your emotions around that. And, and usually 70% of my audience is women. Mm -hmm. And the, the main thing I hear, confidence. Mm -hmm. And I always have to say, the challenge with confidence is that it's a fruit, not a gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And fruit are grown, gifts are given. Right. I can't give you confidence. I can show you how to grow it, mm -hmm. but it had to do with the reprogramming of the unconscious mind. Is that some of the thing that you, you address? And, and if so, what are the results that people typically get after working with you? So for confidence, the things we talk about is actually taking action, being persistent, right? And also fa being okay with failing and failing forward, right? Because often we hold back because we're afraid of failure. But if we look at failure as a part of growth, we're going to take more risks, right? But without risk, there's going to be no growth. Um, so- Well, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, go, go. I, I, the thing I, that I run into, and I'm wondering if this is a challenge you address, is that when I ask people, what do you tend to focus on good stuff or bad stuff? And they go bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And I go, write this down. What you focus on expands. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to expand? Good stuff or bad stuff? Good stuff. Okay. How do we focus on that? Yeah. So one of the uh, strategies that I teach is a very simple practice that I suggest people employ in the morning and it works not just for women, but for men too. It's a great practice for children. And often people will say it's self reflection or affirmations, but I actually specifically do I am statements in the morning. I learned it from someone else. Uh, and, and what I learned was, is that when you really think about the I am statements that you say in the morning, if you're not, intentionally having a practice of making them positive, the majority of them are negative. And for mm -hmm. women, often it's when you look in the mirror and you're judging your appearance. You know, for mothers, often it's their judgmental of their ability to be a mom or a good mom. Um, it's about our weight. It's about how we look. It's about how smart we are, how dumb we think we are. So it's about taking those negative statements that are so simple. They could be three let three word sentences like one of mine was I am weak I had I am old and my other one was I am ugly and it's about flipping those and literally crossing out the negative word and writing the opposite and like you said you can't it can't be negative so it can't be that I am not weak it has to be the opposite I am strong because you're still going to hear the, hear the word weak now the challenge is they're not all that simple because some of them were planted in us when we were very young. So the belief that I had of myself being ugly was the influence of my father unknowingly. He gave me a nickname when I was about nine or 10 years old. The nickname was Slim and I was not slim. I always had a few extra pounds on me. So it was a sarcastic nickname he gave me that I didn't realize this till I was in my forties that I took that nickname and I created an entire story of my, about myself. And that story was that I was ugly. Mm -hmm. And so to change that, it's not, you can't just write it down on a post-it note and just believe it. You have to find a new lenses to look at yourself through. So I was looking at myself through the lenses of my father. And when I learned this strategy, the suggestion was find someone in your life that sees you in a way you don't see yourself. It's one of those people you actually are almost apologize or, uh, apologizing or discounting yourself to. It's that person that says to you, Pat, you're amazing, you're brilliant, you're smart. Oh my gosh, I want to be just like you. That person in your life that says that to you and you're doubting it and brushing it off and saying, no, 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 I'm not that great. 
that's who that you want to look for in your life. So for me, it was my baby sister, Krista. She's 18 years younger than me. And she used to tell me as a little girl, I, you're the most amazing, most beautiful woman in the world. And I want to be just like you. And I used to, in my mind, just say, you have no idea what you're talking about. You're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Well, when I learned this technique, I thought, okay, let me just, I'm going to cross out ugly and I'm going to write down beautiful. And I would literally stand, it's only supposed to be like a one or two minute practice, but I would stand in front of that mirror in the morning. And I learned to say those every word with meaning. And the, some of them were simple. I'm strong. I'm youthful. And I get to, I'm beautiful. And I would say, I'm beautiful. And I would look in the mirror and I'd be like, okay, what does Krista see in me? And I did it every day, every week, every month. It took me about three years. And I literally did not see anything beautiful about myself in the mirror. It took me three years of a daily practice to finally see a beautiful woman in the mirror. And now you can't stop me because I think I'm hot too, but just kidding. You know, it, it's, it was a mindset. And yeah, now, you can take that away. I know. Uh, own it, baby. Yeah. yeah. Now I'll look in the mirror, you know, no makeup, hair standing up on the top of my head because I've got short hair when I get up and I can always see something attractive about myself. And I spent 30 years of my life thinking I was ugly. It took me three years to erase that. So three years is a long time, right? But when you believe something for 30 because of a stupid nickname, and we all have it, men, women, we all have it, right? Parents, you know, they don't intend to scar their children for life, right? It's not their intention. My dad, I was a firstborn child. I, he, I didn't come out with a user manual. He thought he was funny. He did not intend to give me that belief in myself. Um, and maybe it was, maybe I had that belief so I can help other women overcome their self-limiting beliefs. Because really where it comes from is it starts here. If you can't, change this, you're not going to get, you're not going to be able to come and live your full potential in life. Well, it's, what's so powerful about what you're saying is, because for me, it wasn't necessarily the, the destruction from childhood. It's the minefield you walk through in your life when you go through your first marriage mm -hmm. and your second marriage and, and, and your kids are taken to another state because that's her hometown. Yeah. And now there's this, this part of you that doesn't know what to deal with all this pain. Mm -hmm. And of course, what I did was stuff it because that was the only emotional tool in my tool shed. And it, it, I don't know if you ever tried stuffing it, but it's like taking an inflated oh, yeah. ball, holding it underwater, <laughs> expecting it never to come back up. In 10 minutes, uh, 10 months of being without my oxygen, mm -hmm. one day I'm combing my hair and the next second I'm on the floor mm. and I'm bawling my eyes out. Yeah. And at that point, my heart had been so broken and shredded mm -hmm. that on the inside, I looked more like a porcupine than a person. Mm -hmm. Realizing that five sixths of my brain, my unconscious mind, had to be reprogrammed to begin to heal that hurt, mm -hmm. to begin to shift. And I don't know about, do you think any of your audience, uh, Kathy, has an internal critic that has their, their volume turned all the way up and has all the real estate in your head? <laughs> do, you, do you know what I'm talking about? Absolutely. What, okay, okay, yeah. And so it was image, I am, my first one, worth it. Mm -hmm. And then image because it creates an image of that mm -hmm. and then emotion feeling it and then that repetition every morning just like you yeah and every evening because the unconscious is closest to the surface first 30 minutes last and yeah. you know it's so amazing so i'm so I, I so commend you for what you're doing and have you created any any programs for ladies to begin to really connect to you on uh, at this time period to, for you to help them begin to really shift gears so that they can operate where they know that they really are supposed to be at. Yes. I in that position with all the worthiness mm -hmm. so that when somebody tosses them a nine pound pearl of appreciation, like you're so beautiful, mm -hmm. they don't pick up a tennis racket and go, right. this whole thing. I only put this on when I don't care what I look like. You're, that's I'm, exactly what I'm talking about. We do that all time. I bought it at Ross, $10. <laughs> Women do that all the time. <laughs> I, I just sit there and I go, reverse it. 
pops a nine pound pearl of appreciation. Hey, Kathy, you look amazing. And if she doesn't catch it and go, thank you, mm -hmm. what have, what, what has happened to your nine pound pearl that you gave? Right. It's been batted away. Yeah. And I go, what, what have you got for folks, for ladies to really tap into you and, and gain and glean from your coaching and your services? Yeah. So I do have a, a individual coaching program that I do that is uh, in a, co in a group format. And then I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching, which a lot of people benefit from that one-on-one -on -one coaching. Cause typically as women, we're not that comfortable really you can, we can talk about the surface level things that bother us, but really to dig deep, um, it's really better to connect one-on-one -on -one, um, so that we can really kind of pull back those layers of the onion, which I think right now COVID is actually doing that for us, right? Because we're spending a lot of time with ourselves and you can't ignore those things. And I know many people are spending more time, you know, working on, well, either completely hiding from it or they're working on themselves. They're you know, they're remaking themselves, they're looking for new jobs, they're trying to figure out what's next. And this is a perfect time to really look at your belief system so that the next choice you make, especially if you have the opportunity to make another choice, right? To, because maybe you're out of work or maybe your work is declining or your business is changing and your job's gonna be different internally. You know, why not be intentional about really doing something that you love and that you want to do and that's gonna fill you up so that you can continue to give because as women we're givers right Absolutely. so yeah so you know i can work one-on-one -on -one with them with simple programs it you know i am statement seems so simple right and it is simple but it helps to have somebody with you side by side dealing with what comes up right and holding you accountable because it's simple to to put into place two two and a half minutes in the morning in the mirror but it's also one of those things that's easy to just not do because maybe the first day you don't see it working you've got to give it a week two weeks three weeks so absolutely i work one-on-one -on -one with women um on some programs similar to that just simple programs but at the same time having somebody walk you through them is a great benefit especially uh when we're already now too even though we've got opportunities for growth we're also more emotional right now right we're trying to understand what's going on around us and to have a partner in that uh, it can be very beneficial. I think America is really hurting. I mean, I look around and, and I see the three dominant emotions of pain are anger, fear, and sadness. Anger comes from an offense. I see a lot of offended people and so they get angry. Fear comes from rejection and I feel there's a lot of rejection. And the one that we reject the most, who's that? Ourselves. Well, that's, the answer. that's right. Yeah. And the loss loss of life as it was because this is the new normal yeah. and tomorrow is going to be a new normal yeah and and so how can people connect you i know you've got a creative way to to, to show it because i've been watching these podcasts there you go at kathy speaks okay yep. nope no stuttering here there you go you go to my website you can uh fill out a contact kathy form i'll get in touch with you uh my phone number is on that page you can call me uh, I'm, you know, not traveling, so I'm more available than ever. Uh, I'm loving sleeping with my dog at night uh, and being able to take care of myself and help other women. I work with men too, but, you know, women uh, really like my programs, but honestly, uh, they work for men too. <laughs> well, the, the funny thing is, Kathy, is that uh, we basically walk down the same road and I, I, I uh, the things that I teach and, the, but what I'm, I'm so honored to see is that, and I know this is so needed because everywhere I go, people are wanting confident, women are wanting more confident. Yeah. Yeah. And I go, it's kind of a reprogramming thing. Mm -hmm. It absolutely grow is. This thing. And the other thing is, is we have to tear down those walls mm -hmm. of be, uh, the, what I call lies that we bought, yes. the limiting beliefs in our life, yeah. so that we can begin to shift. Yeah. Because the first time anyone does this, I am, worth it. I am successful. I am. It, there's this bs meter that's going off mm -hmm. inside of your head going, no, you're not. 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 You know, and the funny thing is, is that the more this is said, the more you're grabbing a hold of that internal critics volume mm -hmm. control and real estate control and beginning to reduce it yeah. to where in about 30 days, it be, the unconscious will believe anything. 
it begins to hear. Yeah. And that's why working with you over, you know, a season mm -hmm. could really transform somebody's life. Um, so it's Kathy at kathyspeaks.com. Correct. It is Kathy with an I, I know. Kathy with an I, yeah. Let's make sure we, that's, you know, me when I was 14 years old. Trying I'm just to trying to make sure that the yeah. audio side of this gets the video side of it. Yeah. Ish. Yep. So. Kathy with an I, K-A-T-H-I at kathyspeaks.com. That's amazing. Um, last words as we close the, 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 the show today. What would you say to ladies right now? I would say one of the, you know, hopefully you love the idea of the I am statements. And I would say the other thing is try spending as much time focusing on your, what you're good at, on the successes you've had in life, on how you are always building other people up and giving to others. Um, spend the same amount of time on that as you do beating yourself up on where you feel you need to improve. Because if you can just give equal time to that, you'd be amazed at how much that will affect your confidence. I hope that they to begin to move the dial over to where it, yeah. you know, I, it sounds funny, but biggest concern is people think, well, that sounds, I feel like I'm going to end up looking like a narcissist. Mm. And uh, as you know, nobody that you work with is ever going to be a narcissist. Right. Because that's, there's, that's too, that's too repulsive. Right. You could get to healthy where you like you and you like others more yeah. because the challenge with not liking yourself is when you, because I've run into it too many times is that people that don't like themselves and I go, what do you bring to relationship or the leadership word is what'd you call it? Le no, or leadership. What do you bring to leadership? Well, in yeah, relationships right? in any way. What yeah. do you bring to a relationship? Whether yeah. it's leadership, what do you bring to your life is actually to everybody else. If you don't like you, all that you bring is manipulation. Yes. And I go, when you get good in here, what you give is from within you, which is right. the appreciation, yeah. the value, the mentoring, all yeah. of those things are, you, you know, and so I'd, I'd connect to Kathy, Kathy at Kathy speaks.com. I'm Pat Dewar. This is strength-based marketing. It's, all about bringing ideas, tools, and I'm trying to bring in a, a real eclectic group of different ways that we can begin to help businesses mm -hmm. from shifting our mindset to shifting our marketing to shifting the way that we begin to approach this relaunch. Yeah. So with that, thanks so much, folks. See If you like the show, share it, like it, connect to Kathy, um, and, uh, and I, I just encourage you, take the information, implement on it, Mm -hmm. You'll see massive transformation. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.